What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over Fenwick trees. I'm going to try to explain it, how it works, and then how how we got there, and then pretty much what's the purpose of it, and why, why we do it, okay? So, let's say I have an array of A, and the array of A contains these elements 5, 2, 9, negative 3, 5, 20. And they are all indexed from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's say, I'm going to ask you, now sum up the numbers from 2 to 5, right? From the index of 2 to 5. Now, you might be wondering, okay, that's easy. I'll just loop through the numbers from 2 to 5. So if I'm right here, I'm just going to add numbers 2, uh, the indexes, at uh, the numbers at the indexes 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I'm going to add 9 plus negative 3, 9 plus negative 3, plus 5, plus 20. And that'll just get me to 31, right? 9 plus negative 3, 6 plus 5 is... 11, 11 plus 20 is 31. And that'll be okay, right? That's all right. But in large numbers, if in large numbers, that takes O of n time, right? O of n of, if you have a size of n, I'll take O of n because you have to go through that many number of numbers, right? Okay, so what is a one solution you could do? You could create a prefix sum. So if I were to create a prefix sum called T, T is my prefix sum. I'm going to start with the numbers five and I'm going to keep adding by the current number. And then that'll be my total sum at the current index. So five plus two would be seven. Seven plus two is 16. 16 plus negative three, 13. 13 plus five is 18. 18 plus 20, 38. And that is our prefix sum. So now if you ask me how, uh, what if I want to sum up the numbers from two to five, all I have to do because I have the sum at from zero to five, which is 38, I just have to take this sum, right? So we have the, the sum from zero to five, add our prefix sum at five, 38, subtract it from the sum at zero and one, and then we would have our remainder sum from two, three, four, five. So that would be the prefix sum of T of five minus T of one. And that would be 38 minus, uh, yeah, 38 minus seven, which is gonna give us, 38 minus seven is gonna give us 31. And that's the same thing as if you sum from two to five. So if you wanna sum using prefix sum, you would from, if you wanna sum prefix sum from I to J, right? It'll just be like, it'll be T of J, the sum of T of J minus T of I minus one, right? But what if I want to, add something like what if i updated this array to become i don't know from negative three i added one right now then i have to regenerate this prefix sum over and over again and that's not good so what is a way you could avoid doing this like uh regenerating over and over again to avoid that uh what you could do is you could split your prefix sum in half right and then restart another prefix sum on the other half of the array so if i have like five two nine and negative three, five, 20. I'm gonna restart my prefix sum at three, four, and five. So my, I would have my first prefix sum, T1, five, seven, 16. And then my next prefix sum is gonna be negative three plus five, which would be two plus 20, which would be 22. And what this does is that now, whenever, whatever I update on T1, I don't have to update at T2. So then now if I update T1 value, I don't have to update T2. And then that would save us time from adding and subtracting. The only issue here now is that summing between the prefix sums would be much more hassle. So like if I want to sum from one to three, right? If I have to sum from one to three, I would have to basically do a, uh, T two, a T one of two, right? Let's take the 16, right? And then subtract from T one to zero, which would give me, um, 11, right? That'll give me 16 minus five would be 11. And then I would have to add that with the first value of my first prefix sum. So I would add this 11 plus T2 of uh, the first value, which would be zero. And that would give us 11 minus eight, three would be give us eight, All right? So that would give us eight. And that's, that's what this does Two That would be the sum from one, two, and three, right? If I'm adding sums from one, two, and three, between the two prefix sums, that would be more hassle, but it would help us saving our updates. And that's basically what Fenwick trees do. We are going to split the 
array into multiple halves over and over again and then that'll be the sums from those halves okay so i'm gonna draw that out all right guys so now what i did was i just redrew the array vertically from scratch and then i added more values so like i had like 10 negative 7 2 3 and then i also showed the indexes the current indexes which is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and those are just the indexes of the array for each number right uh, i'm indexing from one because it's more easy to understand this way so what i also did was i also wrote the equivalent binary of the corresponding index so for zero 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 one that's the the binary representation of the index one for zero zero one zero that's a binary representation of index two for zero zero one one that's a binary representation index three for zero one zero zero that's a binary index uh, binary representation index four for zero one zero one that's a binary representation of index five for zero one 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 uh zero one one zero that's binary representation of index six zero one 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 seven one zero 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 one zero zero one one zero one zero okay so now how do we create the Fenwick tree well first of all we're going to look at each bit that is set so from the rightmost bit we see one is set right this this bit is set as one and we're going to go downwards to see all the corresponding ones that are set so we have this one is set this one's set uh this one's set this one's set this one's set and those are the corresponding ones that are set uh maybe i should change the brush hold up this is better yeah this is better so these are the ones that are currently set and we're, what we're going to do is we're just going to write the corresponding odd number not not odd number the corresponding array value for those these values that have the first bit set so this one has first bit set so we're going to set that as five so our it's gonna be five three has a bit set so that'll be nine so we're just going to set that as nine five has this bit set so we're going to set that five is equal to five um seven has this bit set so we are going to set our value to have the same array as the original value, so that'll be 10. Uh, nine has this bit set, so we're gonna have the original value of two. Okay, so these, as you can see, uh, half of the values are the exact same values as this, and they are all odd, right? The first values are all odd. So half of them are gonna be the exact same values as your original array. So once we're done looking at all the first bit set, we're gonna look at the second bit now. So for every second bit, we're gonna add to the first corresponding bit. So like, let's say this, this the second bit, this bit is set, right? This bit from this column down. So you see this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. These are all sets, set, have the bit set. So we're gonna add it corresponding to the first value. So now two plus five is going to be seven. So we put seven here. Okay, so now let's look at another one. Uh, four is, does not have this bit set so we're skipping that six uh six does have this bit set so we're going to add the corresponding value of five and six at index five and index six so that's 20 plus five which is 25. so we're going to put that here okay so now we have 25 there now we're going to look at the last one uh this one 10 has this bit set and that has a value of three so we're going to add three plus two which is five See, so now now we have those bit sets. So right now we have all the bits that are first column that, is, that are set. We wrote the original value. The second column we just summed up the first two. All right, now let's let's look at the third column. So now we have four. This bit is set. So we are we're actually going to add all the values from one one two three to four. So that's f uh, five plus two five plus two plus nine plus negative three and that's uh seven plus nine 16 minus three is 13 so this is 13 so that's uh t of four so this is going to be 13 and uh let's look at another corresponding bit that's set uh that's it actually third bit that are set uh yeah that's it uh we're not going to look at these values i think for now for now let's not look at seventh bit um yeah uh let's look at the the last bit so the last bit that is set all these values uh eight nine and ten so let's look at eight 
So for eight, we are going to, because this bit is set, we're going to add all the values before eight. So we're going to do like a five plus two plus nine plus negative three plus five plus 20 plus 10. Whoops. Plus 10, uh, five, 20, 10, negative seven. Yeah, and then let's just use a calculator for this because I don't want to compute this by hand. So five plus two plus nine plus negative three plus five plus 20 plus 10 plus negative seven. And that's 41. And yeah, that's 41. So we put that 41 down here. And that's basically our tree for now. And uh, if you want to check your tree evaluation, you could use this online tool uh, that you could put uh, visualgo.net Fenwick tree. Um, what this does is that it actually creates, it shows you the representation of the Fenwick tree. So if you look at this, you would have, I inputted the values. Let's actually input the values. So our values were 5, 2, 9, negative 3, 5, 20, 10, negative 7, 2, 3. Uh, so we do go. It actually creates the Fenwick tree, and then you could check your values. So let's see. Okay. So based on this, you see that we have 5, 7, 9, 13, 5, 25, 10, 41, 2, 5. And let's look at our, our answers. So we have 5, 7, 9. So that's right, 13, 5, 25. Uh, do they have 10? Let's see if they have 10. They do have 10. 10, 41, 2, and 5. So yeah, it is the exact same answer as the, their Fenwick tree representation. So that's how you create your fin Fenwick tree. All right, guys, so let's say we want to sum up the values from one to seven now. So like, let's say I want to find the sum of seven from one to seven, right? Well, let's see what we would do normally. So normally you would just add up all the values from one, two, three, uh, index one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's actually compute that. So just from summing up, summing it up normally, the answer would be 48. This is just summing it up normally go through it. But uh, as you can see here, you don't actually have to sum up the values normally like this. So like uh, if I want to find the sum of one to seven, all I have to do actually is literally just do take the sixth. Uh, so like, look, if I do T of seven plus T of six plus T of, uh, let's see, four. Yeah, T of four. So this would be 10 plus 25 plus four, which would be 13. And this would give us 10 plus 25 plus 13. That'll give us 48, right? So how did I get these numbers? Well, you don't actually have to actually completely like sum it up from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, all you have to do is just go through each bit that is in your current number that's set and then unset the bit and then add the, the value that's unset to the current value that you have in your array. So I like look uh, to your current value in your answer. Okay, right, so let's say I want to do sum of seven. So sum of seven, which is one to seven. So the binary equivalent of this is zero one one one. So this is going to be sum of zero one one one. And basically I'm going to take this bit and set it to zero. So then I'm going to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it with sum of zero one one zero. And now this bit is set to zero. Then I'm going to take this bit and set this bit to zero. So I took the first bit, set it to zero. Second one, take the second bit, set it to zero. So I'm gonna, that's gonna add sum of zero, one, zero, zero, right? Then I'm gonna take the third bit and set this to equal zero. So that's gonna be uh, plus sum of zero, zero, zero. And that's just zero. So then this is gonna give us sum zero, one, one. Zero, one, one is 10. So this is gonna have 10 plus 25 or zero one zero zero what's zero one zero 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 one uh, zero one one zero zero one one zero that's 25 10 plus 25 and then plus 10 plus 25 plus uh, let me just move this up real quick yeah 
Um, let me see, can I minimize this? I think I could, yeah, I can minimize it, yeah. Uh, do, 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 yeah. So now that gives us 10 plus 25, and then set this bit, which is 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, 0 is 4, and t of this was 13, so we're going to plus 13, and that's going to give us 48 in the end, which is the exact same number as our original number. So yeah, that's how you would sum up numbers for that um, in a fin Fenwick tree. So if you want to basically sum up these numbers, the code would actually wouldn't be that difficult. It's just you and it by, um, you flip the last bit and then you and it. So that would set the last bit to, maybe I'll type the code out later, how you would do that. But yeah, that would be it. So now let's talk about updating. All right, guys. So basically I just redrew the whole array and the corresponding fin tree horizontally now because uh, I need more space to draw. So basically, now let's say we want to add 10 to at index four. So let's say I want to add 10 at index four. So at index four, I'm going to add 10. So this is like updating it. Um, so what, what, what would I do? Well, basically you do the same thing. Uh, instead of adding, instead of removing the least significant bit, you add a, a bit in the beginning every time and until you reach the end of your length of your array, then you stop adding it. So basically that's how you propagate through your Fenwick tree. So let's say I want to convert, uh, let's, I want to add 10 to at index four, right? So what I would do is that, uh, first let's draw out the binary representation of index four. So this is, this is index four, right? Four. So the binary representation index four is zero, one zero zero right and this is what we're going to do is we're going to take this value t of this uh, at index four and then we're going to add by 10. okay so whatever at t at index four we're going to add it by 10 so this is going to be 23. right and our original value at index four we're adding it by 10 so this is going to be seven uh, uh i don't know how to draw it uh make this become seven yeah now this is seven. Okay, so negative three is now become seven because we're adding by 10. So 10 plus negative three is seven. And t at four, we now, now becomes 23 because we added, added 10, right? So yeah, t at four is 13 and then we plus 10, which gives us 23. So now what we're gonna do is we are now going to set the bit at the far left. So we're gonna keep setting the bits at the far left and then add those values by 10 also. So originally this bit is set at four. So now we're going to set this bit, set this bit. So that's T of one, zero, zero, zero. And we're going to add 10 to this. So T of one, zero, zero is now eight, right? It's eight. So we're going to add 10 to this. So T at eight is 41. So we're going to add 10. So 41, uh, this is add 10 is now 51. So we do 41 plus 10. 51 and this now becomes 51 and now what we're going to do is we're going to set the bit on the left side again so now we have t so originally now it's this one this was set now we're going to add another one so now we're going to have one and add four zeros now to the end so one two three four All right we add another one yeah um so this, we're gonna add 10 to this one. And this is actually zero, one, two, three, four. This is actually 16. So this is, this is the value of 16. So because T of 16 doesn't exist, it's greater than our original array of T, uh, we're done. Okay, so now we are finished. Finished because T of 16 is greater than our array, right? It should be 16. 16 is greater than our array. 16 is greater than our array length. Then we're stopped. So yeah, that's basically how you would update values in your Fenwick tree by adding values like 10 and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, this was a pretty basic overview of how Fenwick trees work. Um, I might create another another tutorial about fin Fenwick trees actually that is more in depth, and I might actually draw out the tree itself. But this is a quick tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.